I have another story for you from China and it's called How the Xilin River Got Its Name. In Jingning County, Gansu Province, there is a beautiful river. The water is so clear you can see river weed and stones on the riverbed, tadpoles and bubble fish swimming and other interesting little creatures. You can't help wanting to jump in and play in it. Long ago, so the legend says, anyone who was tempted to go and play in the water or have a swim disappeared without trace and no one ever saw them again. Every summer the river flooded for no reason. People lost their lives, houses, farms and crops were ruined. Usually the floods happened at night, especially when there was a full moon. At that time the river was called Ruined River or in Chinese Fei He. In the olden days in China, people used rivers for washing clothes, having a bath, and for irrigating the fields. The Feihe River could not be used for any of these things. The river was terrible, and its reputation grew worse as the years went by. But nobody dared to look for the reason as to why the river behaved so badly. Everyone stayed as far away as possible from the river and went through each summer in a state of panic as to what evil would befall them next. <coughs> On a hot summer's day, Zha Jin, a young farmer, was walking back to his house for his lunch. He heard a strange, terrifying noise. Rushing towards him was a swirling mass of dark, muddy water. The river had overflowed its banks and was now chasing him. Oh no, he thought as he turned to run. The river is flooding in broad daylight. Normally it floods at night. Jia ran as fast as he could towards the river to the village, screaming, Help me! The muddy water swirled him into the river and dropped him into a whirlpool. I'm going to die. I'll never see my wife and children again. He gulped a big mouthful of air. Loud sounds flew around his ears like a mob of angry wasps. Then something like a huge tail whacked his body. He reached out with his hands and tried to grasp something, anything to help him get out of the swirling water. His hand grasped a tree root and he managed to haul himself out of the river. Bit by bit he crawled up the muddy bank, clinging on to the tree root. And then he saw it. His heart skipped a beat and coiled in fear. <coughs> there on the river bank was a huge snake with nine heads, a terrible hissing voice it started to speak all the words coming from all the heads at the same time. You, sir, are the only person ever to have survived my flood, and you are now in my world, the world of the river. You are courageous, and I like that in a man. I am going to give you a chance to return to your village and your world, but you must tell everyone that. Wait! Zhao shouted. I heard you say my flood. What do you mean by my flood? Do you mean that every year it's your mischief that has caused the flooding? Do you mean that you have destroyed all the people that have gone missing each year, not to mention the animals and destruction you've caused by floods? It was all because of you? The huge snake laughed until all its coils down to its pointed tail rippled. Yeah! It was me. It hissed from all its nine mouths. Xia so wanted to run at the snake and kill it, but he stood rooted in fear to the ground. Because I am forever, snapped the snake. I own this world. I am omnipotent. I'm going to eat you humans one by one. Crunch your bones. Slowly, oh so slowly. And the snake laughed a hollow sounding laugh. You can't fight me, little man. All your struggles and bad thoughts are in vain. You cannot do anything to me. I am invincible. The snake paused for breath. Today I am going to let you go. You can be my messenger to the world of men. Zhao took in a sharp breath of relief and shifted his gaze from the snake's nine hissing heads, each with a long black forked tongue flicking out from it, each displaying huge fangs. Look at me, snapped the snake. Look at me when I am talking to you. 
Jar wondered which of the heads was speaking. He could tell it was only one, but he didn't know which. You do not have very good manners, oh speck of dust. Neither do you, you great monster, Jar thought. I know what you're thinking, yelled the snake. Do not try to double-cross me. Calm down, calm down, you ugly brute, Jowl thought. And to the snake he bowed low and said, I am yours to command, O oh master. Good, the snake hissed, smiling a snaky smile with all of his nine mouths. Tell all people who live along this river that every year, and the snake paused for effect to let his words sink deep into Jowl's mind, at this time of the year, on this very date, when the sun rises high and is straight overhead, you must push a person into the river for me to eat. Why, thought Jar, but he didn't dare question the snake. Out loud, I need to drink human blood and eat human flesh to make me strong. That's why, said the snake, reading his thoughts and answering them. If you do this, I will not harm your village. The snake paused. Remember, though, if you do not bring me the gift of a human life, if you forget or are late even one time, I will ruin the whole country, the whole province, all of China, and eventually the world. Remember my words, little man of dust. And then the huge snake slithered into the swirling water and disappeared. The water grew still and peace returned to the river banks. Jar ran towards the village and collapsed at the feet of the village elders. The villagers gathered round and Jar told them that the huge snake, what the huge snake had said. When he finished speaking, everyone was silent. In everyone's mind was the question, what could they do and who would be the sacrificial lamb? How could they choose who to send to their death? Time passed. Soon a whole year had rolled by. And the next day would be the day that the villagers must push a person into the water to feed the monster snake. All the people got together to decide who the first person would be. One hour passed, then the second hour, the third, the fourth and fifth and sixth hours passed, but still no choice was made. At last a young 22-year-old man who had been an orphan most of his life stood up. I will be the first sacrifice, he said slowly. You've all been so good to me since my parents died. I would like to repay you for your kindness, and this is the way I can do it. Everyone looked at him. Tears started to roll down their cheeks. They all loved Xilang like their own child. He was such a kind, warm-hearted person, always willing to help others. No, Xilang, you must not. It's too great a sacrifice. Yes, I must. It's the only way. I have no father, no mother, no wife, and no children. There is nobody who depends on me to provide for them. I am an orphan and you all took me in. You treated me like you treat your own children. You raised me. You made me part of your families. I love you all and now I can do something to help you. I hope that by giving my life I can save everybody in the future. Do not worry, I have a plan. I might lose my life but I will make sure that nobody ever again has to pay the sacrifice. By my dying you will live. The village elders bowed their heads in sorrow. So be it then, said the older, <coughs> oldest elder, a little sob in his voice. My son, it is a noble thing you propose to do. May the Emperor of Heaven, the Jade Emperor, be with you and reward you for your unselfish act. Si Lang bowed respectfully to the elders. You are my fathers, he said softly, and left to make preparations for the following day's noontide sacrifice. The next day at midday, when the sun was at its highest, Silang went and sat down near the river with a sharp hatchet hidden behind him. He was waiting for the monster. It seemed to him that he sat for hours waiting, but it was only a matter of minutes. Then he saw the water ripple and up came the nine heads of the monster, each tongue flicking with anger and nine pairs of angry evil looking eyes fixed themselves on Silang. The snake was very angry. He thought that the villagers had forgotten to send the sacrifice. He was ready to destroy them and all they owned. And then he saw Silang sitting quietly on the river bank and he began to smile, his snaky smile, with all of his nine heads. And suddenly his mood changed. Why didn't they push into the river? asked one of his heads. 
It's my fault, O oh great one, said Si Lang, respectfully bowing his head. I told them I would come and see you by myself. But just now, as I was coming along the path, I hurt my foot. So why don't you come out here and get me? If I leave the water, my power might be weakened, thought the snake. But then I do own the whole world. No one can rival me, not even the Jade Emperor himself. I am more powerful over these humans than he is. Even though my power is not so great on land, I'm still more powerful than these weak creatures the Jade Emperor has created. These, this human, in fact no humans, would dare to harm me. The huge snake slithered out of the river and coiled his great length into a neat coil in front of Silang. Are you scared? he hissed. No, replied Silang. I am not scared to die. I came willingly as the sacrifice. But before I die in this place, I want to say something very important. I am here and I am yours. The nine pairs of eyes glittered and the snake hissed, yes, 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 in turn from all of his nine mouths. So do you promise that you will not hurt anyone anymore? Yes, I promise, said the snake. Do you promise not to make floods anymore? The snake thought for a moment, then softly nodded all its nine heads and hissed another, yes. Silang knew that what he was about to do would make the snake very angry, so angry that it might revenge itself on the village, but not only the village, all of China and all the world. Do you promise to keep your promise? Swear by the throne of the Jade Emperor. I promise not to harm anyone again. I swear by the throne of the Jade Emperor, declared the snake. Now come here, human. Silang reached behind him and picked up his hatchet. The blade sparkled in the air as it came down on one of the snake's nine heads. The head bounced hissing onto the ground. The snake let out a mighty howl of pain and surprise. Blood spurted from the neck where the severed head had been. It thrashed its great head and whacked Silang. Silang threw, flew into the air and landed a long distance away. He splat, spat blood onto the ground. The snake sprang on its coils and hit Silang again. Silang tried to hack off the snake's other heads. The battle was terrible. Silang knew that soon he would die. He was getting weaker and weaker, but he knew that he had to cut off the main head of the snake. But which one it was, he did not know. But he did know that the creature only had one heart. Before I die, I must cut the monster's heart out, thought Silang. The snake gave a roar from the remaining eight heads and coiled its head into an S, ready to strike again. Silang grabbed his hatchet and jumped into one of the snake's open mouths and travelled down into the snake's stomach. Suddenly the snake felt a sharp pain and started coughing up blood from all of its remaining heads. Then it fell to the ground, writhing in agony. Silang, was the last bit of, with the last bit of life left in him, was hacking out the insides of the monster. The next day, the villagers found the dead snake with one of its heads missing. They cut open the snake and found Silang smiling in his long death sleep. Everyone started crying, including the sky. Silang had saved the world from destruction by the terrible snake. Since that time, the river has been very quiet and is always used and loved by the people who renamed the river Silang's River to commemorate the hero Silang and the terrible price he paid to save his people from the monstrous snake. And I hope you enjoyed that story as I did when I first heard it. Goodbye.